Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh In this video, I will proceed with the second part of the last subtopic in chapter 3 which is about the partial fraction decomposition So before that, let us recall the step on how to apply the partial fraction decomposition So the first step, we need to check whether the rational function is a proper or improper So if it is an improper rational function, we need to apply the long division then we can apply the second step but if the rational function is proper rational function then we can just proceed with the second step the second step you have to make sure the denominator is in complete factorization so there are two possibilities is either you get the denominator in terms of linear factor or you will get in terms of irreducible quadratic factor like x squared plus 4 x squared plus 2x plus 1 where if you try to get the values of x you will get a complex zeros or a complex number so that is the irreducible quadratic factor other than that you have to make sure the denominator in terms of linear factor and then the last step we will apply the rules of a decomposition so there are four rules so i have discussed all these four rules in the previous videos now, let us proceed with the example 2 from my slide. Find the partial fraction decomposition of this rational function. We have 5x plus 7 divided by x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. So, what we have to do first here is we have to check. So, the first step, whether is it proper or improper. So, in this case, since the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so it is a proper rational function. Then the second step, you have to make sure the denominator in a complete factorization. So how to factorize this denominator? So when you try to factorize, so you will get 5x plus 7 in the numerator. So in the denominator, we can apply factoring by group. So when we try to group the first two terms in this denominator within x cubed plus 2x squared, and you try to group the x minus 2, the last two terms. So you will get for the first term is x squared. We can factor out x squared. So you will get x plus 2 and then x plus 2 as well for the terms at the back. And the middle here should be minus 1 in order to get negative x minus 2. So as you can see, when you try to expand this one, you will get negative x minus 2. So since this one is the same factor, so this is what we call as factoring by group. But at the end, you will get 5x plus 7 divided by x squared minus 1 and x plus 2. And that x squared minus 1, we still can factorize. It is not complete factorization yet because it is not irreducible quadratic factor we still can factorize within two linear factor so you will get this term as 5x plus 7 divided by x minus 1 x plus 1 and x plus 2 so overall we will have three factor in the denominator and all the three factor is a linear factor so we have applied, we have learned how to apply the rules of the decomposition. So since we have different linear Hi. factor here, so what we can do here is you will get for the 5x plus 7 divided by x minus 1, x plus 1 and x plus 2. So when we try to decompose, you will get a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1 and plus c over Mommy. the last factor which is x plus 2. And what we have to do next here is we will cross this one to the other side and we will multiply this one to the other side. So what left on the left hand side is just 5x plus 7 and when you move these terms to the other side meaning that so let me put it here a over with the x minus 1 you have to times with all the factor in the Ta -da! denominator so you will get x minus 1 x plus 1 x plus 2 
So this is for the first term. For the A over with the X minus 1. So when you multiply this term, you multiply the denominator to the first term, you will get something like this. And we can simplify by eliminate the term of X minus 1. We have X minus 1, X minus 1 here. For, so for the first term, what left is only A times with the X plus 1 times with the X plus 2. So we will put the answer here. So X equivalent to A, X plus 1 and X plus 2. This is what happened to the terms A over X minus 1 when we try to multiply with all the factor in the denominator. Okay, next what we have to do here is we have to multiply the terms of B over with X plus 1 again with the all the denominator, the factor of the denominator which is X plus 1, X minus 1 and X plus 2. Again, we can still simplify by eliminate the term of x plus 1. We also have x plus 1 here. Therefore, the terms for the b over x plus 1 will become b, x minus 1 and x plus 2. So, we will put the answer here for the b. So, b, x minus 1 and x plus 2. Then, we do the same thing for the terms C over X plus 2. So C over with the X plus 2 times with the X minus 1, X plus 1, X plus 2. So when you try to simplify, we can eliminate the terms of X plus 2, X plus 2 here. So what left is only C times with the X minus 1 and X plus 1. So we will put the answer here plus with the C, X minus 1, X plus 1. So this is what you will get on the left hand side which is just 5X plus 7 and on the right side you will get this term. So the left hand side term is equivalent to the right hand side terms but in the different form. So what you have to do with the terms on the right hand side because in order for you to get A, B and also a constant C, we have to expand this expression. So when we try to expand what happened to the terms on the right hand side, you will get A times with the X squared plus with the 3X plus 2 plus with the b x squared plus x minus 2 and plus c times with the x squared minus 1. And again, what we have to do in order to compare, you have to put the terms with the same power of x. So we have a x squared, b x squared and also c x squared. So we can factor out a plus b plus c in the bracket with the x squared term. And we have the terms with the power of x. We have 3a x and also bx. So we can put in the bracket 3a plus b in the bracket x. And the terms with the x we have 2a minus 2b minus c. So what we, need to, what we have to do next, we have to compare the terms on the left hand side with the terms on the right hand side. So we have the terms, we don't have the terms of x squared on the left hand side. So what we can do here is that a plus b plus c is equals to 0. So this is our first equation because there is no terms of x squared on the right hand side. Therefore, the terms of x squared that we get on the right hand side should be equivalent to 0. And the next one, 3a plus b, which is that is referred to the constant of x and the constant of x on the left hand side is 5. So when you try to compare, so you will get 3a plus b is equals to 5. So this is our second equation. And then of course the third equation is the term without x which is 2a minus with the 2b minus c. So this one is equivalent to 7. So this is the third 
equation. So what we have to do with all this equation, of course, we have to solve it simultaneously. So our aim is to get the constant A, B and C. So let us try to solve this simultaneous equation. So the first one, let's say I try to uh, take the terms on the first equation, uh, on the second equation. So from the second equation, we can let B is equivalent to 5 minus with the 3A. And then we can substitute the terms of B in terms of A in the third equation. So from the third equation, by substitute B, so you will get 2A minus with the 2, 5 minus with the 3A minus C. So it is equivalent to 7. And then we can solve for the C in terms of A. So when you try to solve this one, you will get C is equivalent to 8A minus 17. And we can substitute the terms of C equivalent to 8A minus 17 in the first equation. So substitute in the first equation. So A plus with the B, we also can substitute B in terms of A. So everything will get in terms of A. So A plus with the 5 minus 3A plus with the 8A minus 17. So the answer is equivalent to 0. At the end, we will get 6A is equivalent to 12. Therefore, A is equivalent to 2. And then once we get A, of course, we can get B. So from there, B is equivalent to 5 minus with the 3 times 2 is equivalent to negative 1. So we can get the values. Uh, so this answer is equivalent to negative 1. And for the C, we can also get by substitute the values of A. So A times 2 minus 17. So the answer for the C is equivalent to negative 1. So this is the answer for the A, B and also C. So A, this is B which is negative 1 and C is negative 1. So we cannot just leave our answer like this. So this is A, B and C. So what we have to do at the end, we have to substitute A, B and C in the partial fraction decomposition. So if you just leave it your answer like this, so marks will be deducted because it's not complete yet. So your final answer, I will put it up here. So everything in one page. So the final answer should be, so since our A is 2, so substitute A with the values of 2, so 2 over with the X minus 1. And since B is negative 1, so minus 1 over with the X minus plus 1 since c is negative 1 so minus 1 over with the x plus 2 so this is the final answer when the question asks you to find the partial fraction decomposition of this rational function so actually this rational function we can decompose and we will get in this form so this is what we call as partial fraction decomposition. So this is the first method to solve the partial fraction decomposition by using the simultaneous equation. So I will show how to get the values of A, B and C by using alternative method which is by using substitution method in the next video. Okay, thank you.